This short video is going to show you how to carry out a Man Whitney U test by using the program Vassarstats.net. So on the right, what you can see is I've carried out my experiment. I have condition A and condition B, and this is an independent samples design. The Man Whitney U test is used for this type of design. Uh, and we also use this test because I have a very small sample. So a more robust test like the t-test really isn't that appropriate um, at this stage. So what I'm going to do then is first of all you should know that condition A or whatever you're going to call uh, your first uh, variable that's or condition should always be the one with more values in it. If they're exactly the same number of people in each condition then it doesn't matter which one is condition A and condition B. Condition A should always have more numbers in or values in the data set. Now because this is a uh, parametric test what I'm going to be doing is using ordinal data. So even though I have interval data here in my actual collected data I'm going to be converting it to ordinal data in order to carry out this test. So I'm going to come here and click on ordinal data. And when I click on ordinal data, what you'll see is a list of all the different tests that use ordinal data. You'll be happy to know that we are only going to do one in this video, and that's the Man Whitney test. And if you click on that, the first thing it does is it asks you to put in the value of the sample for sample A. In other words, put in how many pieces of data are in sample A. And as we know, it is 12. And when I go here, I'm going to put in 10. So that will come up is this screen with lots of information on it. And I'm just going to scroll down past all of that. It's probably a good idea for our students to read it, um, and maybe even for us to read it. But what I'm going to do is do the most important thing right now, which is to figure out whether or not my data is actually significant. So what I'm going to have to do is come down here to data entry, and I'm going to have to fill in the data that's over here in my chart. And to make life simple, I've already done that for us. So here what you'll see is here is the raw data, all filled in. And all I have to do now is something very simple. After filling in the raw data charts for sample A and sample B, I click Calculate from Raw Data. And all of a sudden, all of the magic happens. Now, the most important part of the Man Whitney U test, of course, is the U value which we obtain. And here, our U value is 38.5. Now, what's important at this stage is for us to know whether or not this value is large enough for it to actually be significant. So in order to do that, I look down at the critical values of u for the value n is 12, n of b is 10. So what I do is I look here, and I see that the lower limit is 34, and the upper limit is 86. So what does this actually mean? What it means is that this value here, if it falls between 34 and 86, then it is not significant. And unfortunately for us, what we see is that at 38.5, it falls between 34 and 86. So therefore, we have to retain our null hypothesis. And what we would say is that with a u of a of 38.5, we do not meet the critical value of 86 and therefore we retain the null hypothesis. In fact, or in f the point is that noise does not have an effect on one's ability to memorize a list of words, or whatever your hypothesis actually was. Now let's look at a different set of data just to see what else could possibly happen. I've entered in some other data here uh, which is different than the data that we originally had. So let me make this a little bigger so you can see it. As I scroll down here, I now calculate from the raw data, and I get a U of A of 120. Once again, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come down here and look to see whether or not my U value is actually significant. So, once again, if it's between 34 and 86, it is not significant. But it isn't. It's greater than the upper limit. In fact, it's greater than the upper limit of P is less than or equal to 0.025. And in fact, it is greater than the p-value for 0 0.01. So I can actually say here that I reject the null hypothesis, that in fact noise does have an effect on one's ability to memorize a list of words at p is less than or equal to 0 0.01. In other words, it's only a 1% chance that my results are due only to chance.